Hi, in this video we're going to get Doubler 2 set up with Studio One. So Doubler 2 is a standalone piece of software that Studio One will see as an external MIDI controller. So to get started, first make sure that the Doubler app is opened and that you follow the steps in the app to calibrate your mic and audio output and then open a profile. Before we head into Studio One, we're first actually going to turn off Doubler's inbuilt audio in the bottom right here and this will mean that we're not going to hear any of Doubler synths and we're only going to hear the sounds from Studio One. But once that's done, we can leave the Doubler 2 app open and head over into Studio One's preferences. So in Studio One's preferences, we're first going to go to external devices. In here is where we can add Doubler 2 as a MIDI controller. So click add in the bottom left and we can leave the device model just as new keyboard here. And in the device name, we'll name this Doubler 2. In the Receive From drop-down here, we want to select Doubler 2 as well. Leave the Send To as None and make sure Split Channels is ticked as this will allow us to split the MIDI channels that the trigger and pitch are being sent out on. Once this is done, you can hit OK and Doubler 2 is now added as a MIDI controller. For the next step, we can now head to the Audio Setup and we can select the audio output we want to use and also the device block size. So it's really important here that our device block size is set to 1 to 8 samples or below in order to reduce any latency. If you're on Windows, the Windows default drivers won't be able to handle low latency. So if you don't have an audio interface that comes with its own driver, you'll need to use ASIO for all in order to get low latency and set your block size to 1 to 8 samples. You can check out our full walkthrough on how to set up ASIO for all over on our Learn Doubler page if you need. But once you have your audio setup done, and Dub is now added as an external device, we can hit OK. So now all our settings are sorted, we can take a look at how to control some sounds within Studio One using Doubler. So first, let's take a look at controlling drums or samples. If I want to control drums or samples, I first need to set up a few triggers in the Doubler app. If you need, we have an in-depth video that goes through how to train triggers, but I'm just gonna quickly add a few now. So now that we have a few triggers trained, we can add an instrument track in Studio One. So I'm going to right click and add an instrument track. And then we can load in a plugin or a sample bank that we want to use. So I'm going to load in Presence here and just select a drum kit from the presets in here. So let's go for a hip hop kit. So before we actually control the sounds in this with those triggers, we're going to first head to the Inspector tab on the left. And in the In section here, we can select Doubler 2 as our input. And by the right hand side of that, we can select the MIDI channel that we want to receive information from. So by default, Doubler sends out pitch information. So that's for singing and humming melodies on MIDI channel one. And it sends out the trigger information. So that's the percussive sounds we've trained on MIDI channel 10. So as we're using the triggers to play drum sounds, we're gonna select MIDI channel 10. And now I can use those triggers to hear it back. If I want to control a pitched instrument, we can add another instrument track with a different synth. I'll just go and change the preset in that one we added earlier. So let's go to synths here and go for just a classic synth lead. So now as we're gonna be controlling this track with pitch information, I'm gonna change the MIDI channel here to MIDI channel one. And then once that's done back in Doubler, I can see that the pitch is on. We're also in a key lock and now I can sing or hum my melody to hear that back. Dun, 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 dun. So there are two ways you can record your ideas with Doubler in Studio One. The first is just recording a live take with Doubler as a real-time MIDI input on your chosen track. So on the track that we set up before, we can see it's armed, Doubler 2 is our MIDI input, and I can simply hit record to record the MIDI information. Dun, 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 dun. The second way to record your idea is to use the Doubler MIDI Capture plugin. So MIDI Capture is a plugin in Studio One that reflects any settings that we have in the Doubler app and then applies a cleaning algorithm to our recording so that we can save time editing MIDI information like we might have to do when recording a live take. To use MIDI Capture, first create a separate instrument track and then we can find the Doubler MIDI Capture plugin in our library. So if I go to Voclia here, we can see Doubler MIDI Capture, and we can add this. Once the plugin is loaded, it will reflect any pitch settings we have in the Doubler app. 
To record using MIDI capture, simply hit spacebar and sing your melody. And once you're finished, hit spacebar again to stop recording, and then the cleaning algorithm will be applied. If you still want to hear your voice back as a chosen instrument, we can make sure the track that we want to hear is record armed with the red button. So I can still hear my voice as that synth. Da, da, da. But when I hit spacebar, it's only going to be recording the melody in the Dublin MIDI Capture plugin. So let's do that now. Da, 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 da. So now I've hit spacebar, the MIDI clip is available here, and I can click and drag this onto any track I like. So I can add it to this track if I wanted. So that's two ways you can record your ideas with Doubler in Studio One, but let's finally take a look at controlling effects or parameters. So in the Play tab in Doubler, on the right hand side, you'll see four dials here that are mapped to the vowels E, R, U, and then the fourth is M, for meaning envelope or intensity of your voice. These dials can be mapped to any MIDI mappable parameter within Studio One. So for example, I could use my R vowel to control the filter cutoff on our synth. To do this, we first need to add these dials into Studio One. So first, head to the Control section at the top, and in this drop-down, select Doubler 2. Then click MIDI Learn, and then back in the Doubler app, in the Assign tab, select Map next to each of the vowels. Now back in Studio One, we can see that these dials are linked. To remind ourselves which dial links to which vowel, we can rename these. So I'm going to name these R, E, U, and then the last one is M. Once that's done, you can untick MIDI Learn, and our dials are now added. So back in that synth, let's say we want to control this filter. I can simply first click Map next to the vowel that I want to link it to. So I'm going to select the R one. And then when I right click on that dial, I can do assign cutoff to R on doubler two. So now they're linked. So as I move from an E to an R vowel, that filter cutoff will change. E so that's how to get started with using doubler in Studio One. If you want to find out more about other parts of doubler, make sure to check out the Learn Doubler page on our website.